largest mass. Block B with mass 5 kg rests on block A with mass 8 kg, which in turn is on a horizontal tabletop as you can see in the figure. There is no friction between block A and tabletop, so this surface is frictionless, but the coefficient of static friction between blocks A and B is 0.75. There is static friction. A light string attached to block A passes over a frictionless, massless pulley, and block B is suspended from the other end of the string. So here is the pulley, and here is the string, and block C is suspended. What is the largest mass that block C can have so that blocks A and B still slide together when the system is released from rest? Okay, so we're going to start with a free body diagram of block A and we have to identify the forces acting on block A. So let's start with free body diagram of Block A. Block A modeled as a particle. What are the forces acting on block A? Well, obviously there is the weight of block A. So we have to put here um, the weight of block A. But at the same time we have the force exerted by block B on block A, which is the weight of block B. So we can add them together and write here the total mass, mass of block A plus mass of block B times gravitational acceleration G pointing down. In reaction to these forces, there will be a normal force acting on block A. So we have to put a normal force here acting on block A. Uh, block A is connected to a string which is passing over a massless frictionless pulley, so there will be a tension here. So tension T will be acting to the right. All right. And since we're trying to pull block A to the right, and there's no friction here, but there is friction here. The friction at the AB interface must be resisting this motion, so it will be pointing to the left. So we can put here static friction pointing to the left. So this is between A and B. And uh, this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, this is x, this is y. And uh, we can write the net force on the y-axis to be equal to zero because we don't have motion on the y-axis. So normal force must be balancing the total weight of blocks A and B, Ma plus MbG. The net force on the x-axis must also be zero. Why? Because block A uh, will uh, move uh, together with block B, um, when it is released from rest, uh, it's not equal to zero because they will be more accelerating. So um, block A will accelerate starting from rest. So for a moment I thought it was constant velocity, but it's not. The system is released from rest and it accelerates. So therefore, this will be equal to mass of block A times the common acceleration A, block A and B are to move together. So this is basically the net force acting to the right, tension minus static friction between A and B. And therefore, uh, we have concluded the free body diagram of block A analysis. Now uh, we can work on um, block B. So let's have block B free body diagram here. For block B, uh, we have the weight of block B pointing down. There will be a normal force and because there is static friction between A and B acting on A to the left, 
it will be acting on B to the right so that they move together. Okay, so block B modeled as a particle uh, feels the gravitational force from the Earth. Uh, mass of block B times G. There is a normal force acting on block B. And there is the same static friction which is now acting to the right on block B due to action reaction principle Newton's third law. Okay. And here we have net force on the y-axis is equal to zero. We don't have a motion on the y-axis. Normal force is mass of block B times gravitational acceleration G. And what is this normal force? Uh, mass of block B was uh, 5 kilograms, so it is uh, 5 times 9.8, which is uh, 49 newtons. The net force on the x-axis is the static friction, which is responsible for the acceleration of block B together with block A. This must be equal to the static friction uh, for the AB interface and uh, block B mass was 5 kilograms so 5A must be equal to uh, the static friction for the AB interface and we know that the static friction for the AB interface is less or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force acting on B so we find that mass of block B times A is less or equal to coefficient of static friction mass of block B times G. Uh, I can divide both sides by mass of block B and obtain that the acceleration must be less or equal to coefficient of static friction times G, which is 0.75 times 9.8 and that equals to 7.35 meters per second square. All right. Now uh, let's work on block C. All right. So free body diagram for block C. Well, this is relatively easy because we have just the weight of block C and the tension acting on it. So we can uh, draw here the weight pointing down, mass of block C times G. The tension T is pointing up because it's a light string. Uh, we have the same tension everywhere. And the net force on the y-axis must be equal to uh, because this is a uh, y-axis, positive axis is here and it will be accelerating down. It will be um, minus mass of block C times A because it's in minus J hat direction. And this is equal to the net force on the y-axis, tension pointing up, uh, the weight pointing down. So, um, on the other hand, um, if we work on the free body diagram of system A plus B, so let's uh, put that here, free body diagram of A plus B, A and B considered together, we have uh, the weight, total weight, MA plus MBG pointing down, the normal force pointing up, and tension acting to the right. So for A and B considered together as one system, we don't have to consider the forces in between them. So therefore, uh, we have this situation. Uh, and you can see uh, from uh, A plus B, uh, that's, so let's uh, work on this here. You can see that the tension 
is equal to, because the net force on the x-axis is equal to the common acceleration times the total mass, ma plus mb times a, uh, the tension is equal to uh, ma plus mb times a, which is uh, 5 plus 8 times a, which is 13a. So this is the uh, tension. All right. And uh, going back to the free body diagram of block C here, I didn't complete this discussion. Uh, here we have minus mc times a is equal to tension minus uh, mc times g. Well, tension I have found out to be equal to ma plus mb times a. So this is going to be ma plus mb times a minus mc times g. So you can see that mc times g is equal to ma plus mb plus mc times a. So if I put this in acceleration parentheses, and I find that acceleration is related to mass of block C as uh, mc times g divided by ma plus mb plus mc. All right, so uh, basically I have looked at all the possible uh, free body diagrams here. And now I'm going to substitute uh, the values of the masses here. Uh, and also I have this condition on the acceleration. So to complete the story, we have acceleration is equal to uh, mc times g, which is 9.8 mc, divided by the total mass. 5 kilograms plus 8 kilograms plus mc. This has to be less or equal to 7.35. That's what we have found here from the condition on static friction, less or equal to mu s times the normal force. Um, so if we work on this, this is going to give us um, Basically, what we're doing is mc times g is divided by ma plus mb plus mc is less or equal to mu s times g. If we do it symbolically, this was our result. a is less or equal to mu s times g. Okay, so that gives us uh, mc less or equal to mu s times uh, because the, the two G's will cancel here, mu s times m, m a plus m b plus m c. Um, so if we put this into numbers here, uh, here we have 9.8 m c. If I didn't cancel the G, I would get here 95.55 uh, uh, plus 7.35 mc, and this gives me uh, 2.45 mc is less or equal to 95.55, which gives me mc less or equal to 39.0 kilograms, up to three significant figures. So symbolic result here is basically mc times 1 minus uh, coefficient of static friction should be less or equal to mu s times ma plus mb and therefore mc is less or equal to mu s divided by 1 minus mu s multiplied by ma plus mb. All right, so that's the symbolic result. 
and this is the numerical result 39 uh, kilograms uh, now one thing to be careful here we have uh, the division of two uh, static coefficients here there's no unit here we have the unit of mass so mass less or equal to another mass dimension wise this equation uh, makes sense well inequality makes sense all right so to summarize we have uh, two blocks a and b b is sitting on top of a there is friction between a and b but no friction between a and the uh, the tabletop a is connected to a massless uh, pulley uh, with a light string and it's frictionless and we have block c connected on the other end of the pulley which is going to slide down and a will slide to the right and we want a and b to slide together and we want to know the maximum mass of c that will make sure that a and b will be still sliding together Okay, so we analyze the free body diagrams A, B, C and the system of A plus B. So uh, if you start from A plus B, for example, you see that we have the normal force, the total weight and the tension pointing to the right. And we don't have to consider the uh, friction here. So it's probably the easiest thing to start with because we don't have to consider the forces that develop between A and B. And uh, this gives us that the tension must be equal to the total mass times their common acceleration, A. If you look at free body diagram of block A individually, you see that A has the weight, A also feels the force exerted by B on A, which is a mass of block B times G. So the total uh, weight is pointing down. The normal force from the horizontal table balances the total weight tension pointing to the right which is going to move the system to the right so the friction between a and b will resist that motion so friction on a would be pointing to the left and this normal force is the total weight and the, no, uh, the total force x component is mass of block a times a uh, which is tension minus the static friction if you write down the free body diagram, if you draw the free body diagram for block B, you see that there is the weight, the normal force, and the friction which was pointing to the left on block A will be pointing to the right on block B, action, reaction. So that gives me uh, the normal force balancing the total weight, 49 newtons, and the total force on the x-axis is uh, mass times acceleration, 5A, block B was 5 kilograms, uh, which is equal to the static friction. So this 5A should be less or equal to mu S times the normal force. And this condition gives me acceleration must be less or equal to 7.35 meters per second square for A and B to move together. Uh, so I have also drawn a free body diagram of block C. There is only the tension and the weight pointing down. And this gives me the total acceleration, common acceleration. Uh, here I was careful because the positive axis, y axis is, uh, y direction is up. So T minus MCG is minus MCA because it accelerates downward. So acceleration is MCG over MA plus MB plus MC. This has to be less or equal to this. Uh, and for tension, basically I have substituted what I found from free body diagram of A plus B. And this condition gives me uh, MC should be less or equal to 39 kilograms. Or when I do the symbolic calculation, it is mu S divided by 1 minus mu S multiplied with MA plus MB. That's the maximum value MC can have so that A and B will still slide together.